welcome to potentially the first annual Learning College Day podcast. Uh, we are going to talk today a little bit about podcasting and how uh, we all kind of encounter that in our in our lives. Uh, and we'll also talk a little bit about Learning College Day. Um, so my name is Dan Matthews. I am the Digital Services Librarian, and I've got some esteemed guests with me today, and we'll just go around and introduce ourselves. My name is Jim Lachlan. Um, I am the Assistant Director of Corporate Community and Continuing Education over in Building M, and my primary role is to work with businesses within the district and communities uh, to assess their training, employee training needs, and then come back to the college and assess our resources, and then prepare a, uh, some curriculum, find an instructor, and, and then contract with that company to provide them with the training or education. My name is Gianna Kafka. I work in the International Student Affairs Department as a department assistant. Um, I took this class because I thought it would be really cool to tie in our international students with podcasts. Hi, um, I'm Marilena Belmontes. I am from Multicultural Student Affairs. I'm a departmental assistant. My number one goal is to irritate Gianna every day, <laughs> who's right across the hall. Um, but sincerely, um, I'm a liaison between the students, our student employees, and advisors. And uh, I took this class because I thought it was interesting. I use Anchor, which I guess is, I don't know if it's considered podcasting as well, so I've used it on a few topics before, but it's all temporary stuff. Um, so I just wanted to see what um, you know the background is and actually creating a podcast. Sure. My name is uh, Brett Figuera. I work in marketing and communications with Link here next to me. Um, I'm a graphic designer, um, mostly uh, print stuff. Um, work on a lot of the larger print pieces, like as far as thickness goes, the schedules and things like that. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts um, throughout uh, the day because I'm at a desk designing away, so I have a lot of time. So there's a lot of music and then podcasts. Um, and uh, I'm also a musician, so there's the audio aspect of uh, taking this class being interested in um, the actual logistics of recording. Cool. And I'm Mike Loveday. I'm the Senior Web Content Specialist here, so it basically means I kind of manage the website and social media accounts for the college. I see work with Brett in that department as well. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I have an hour drive in my commute from Chicago every day, so I get through quite a few over the course of a week. Um, I also make my own podcast, I do a weekly podcast for a website that I run. So, and for this, I was just kind of interested in new tips, tricks, anything I might pick up along the way. My name is Angelo Green. I'm a departmental assistant for academic advising as well as central disability services. Um, pretty much with CDS, I assist with alternative text format. So if they need um, something other than the book, I'm able to um, assist them with that accommodation. And then with academic advising, kind of sort of just, you know, trying to gain information as to why they need help with academic advising and kind of sort of their way through uh, Moraine Valley. Um, I do listen to podcasts. I've actually did a podcast here for Moraine Valley. It was for um, Hamilton, the musical. When we did uh, the uh, book for the college, we had that as our, um, I don't know what it's called, but we did it as our book for the college. And so I had a chance to do a podcast with uh, Troy Swanson as well as Amanda Mezzaro. And so we had a chance to kind of sort of you know, do that. So. I do listen to some podcasts occasionally, but you know, so yeah. Cool. My name is Pam Murphy. I work for Institutional Research and Planning. I'm the secretary in the department. I do not listen to many podcasts. My daughters listen to podcasts all the time, so I thought maybe I'd learn something to share with them. Um, my name is Zion Martin. Uh, you can call me Z. Uh, shipping and receiving supervisor um, out of the RS building. Uh, I listen to quite a few podcasts. Uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I've never recorded any podcast myself, and I am planning on recording some in the future for my other side business. And hi, I'm Patty Friend. I work in the foundation office. I'm director of alumni and annual programs, and I think I have the best job because I get to give away scholarship money to our deserving students, and it's just about the, the most wonderful thing to do is to pick up the phone and call someone and say they got a scholarship, and hear the reaction on the other end. So I just love my job, and I'd like to learn how to do a podcast to get the word out to students to apply for scholarships. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, and now introduce yourself. Oh, hi. 
you're not doing nothing. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're Everything's, just on. we're here. Okay. <laughs> we are here. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Shalita. Uh, and what are you doing? I'm, oh, okay. I'm faculty. <laughs> I'm Comlet Lang. Um, faculty, been here a um, little over a decade. And yeah. Do you listen to podcasts? Do you make podcasts? Like, what's your experience with podcasting? I did a couple in the library. It wasn't by choice, though. They <laughs> really, they, um, you know, may have overheard a lesson or heard something I was doing and asked me to do it. Um, my cousin, he and I are really close, and he's a huge fan of podcasts. And now he sends me through Apple Music a lot of them. <laughs> Um, so I'm doing baby steps right now. Right now I'm just on Oprah So Sunday, Super sure. So Sunday yeah. once. But yeah, I am interested. It seems fun. Cool. Um, I'm so glad you all came uh, to the session today. Um, I want to just give you a little bit of background about what we do in the library. So we really support students with the tech piece. Um, so we will work with classes that want to do a podcasting project. So we often. Um, see like a comm class will come in and ask their students to talk about um, something that they thought was funny or to review a movie with each other. Um, and so one of the big benefits of that is the students get a chance to kind of talk to each other um, and have those conversations about stuff that uh, doesn't feel like classwork, but they still have to like do some reading and do um, some background and come ready to talk, right? So they still have like fulfilling a lot of the same kind of requirements for a typical assignment, um, but it's conversational. So there's a lot of that stuff that still gets to happen. Um, we have some students that will come through and do interview projects. So they'll uh, inter, uh, there's one class that's doing interview an elder, where they talk to an elder in their life and they get to kind of learn about um, that person. And then they also take that as an opportunity to think about their own interviewing skills. So they'll listen back to the, pod, to the, re the recording and then kind of make a podcast using samples from that interview to say, okay, so my work, my uh, interviewing skills, I could work more on this, and here's how I know that because this is what happened in the interview. So they're able to put together a neat little podcast. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff I think that can happen there as well. Um, so the equipment that you all see, and if you are listening to this, you cannot see because podcasting is an oral medium. Um, this is the stuff that we have that's available to students. So students can come and check this equipment out uh, and do recording on their own. They can take it home, they can do it in the library, like this is available for them. Uh, we also have sets of these that are available for classes. So uh, we can set this equipment up and do kind of a recording session for a class. And we have had classes come through um, and we'll set three kits up in our classrooms and in our conference room and students can come and record um, the assignment that they have. So we'll do some instruction about doing this and then using some audio editing software and then they'll come and we'll set it up to have them record. And so they'll use the use that recording to kind of make their final project, which is really neat. Uh, it's really fun to hear, hear them talk to each other. Um, so that's kind of the crux of what we do in the library with our podcasting kit. Um, so going around the room, I heard it kind of sounded like there were some people that had questions about podcasting or wanted to know more about podcasting. Uh, so I'd like to take a second and see what those questions are and um, we can all kind of chime in. I'm happy to also kind of just field some questions about podcasting itself too. What is the equipment? Like I see the microphones, are, are you recording to? Yes. What are you recording um, to? So it's called the Zoom H6 Handy Recorder. Um, and uh, pricing wise, this recorder is about $500. Um, and it records straight to an SD card. What I really like about this recorder is that you just have to get it plugged in, hit record, and you're, you're going, right? So once it's powered on, uh, you hit record again, and then it saves your file and you have access to it. So there's not a, like any kind of uh, involved process to get, you know, to make sure that it's saved and that it's safe. Um, if, the, if the recorder gets turned off in the middle of the recording, it still like saves what you had done, right? It, there's not like a, you stop recording and then have to save it or do something, it's just there, which is really nice uh, for our students, I think. So there's a lot less of the, the panic attack after you record and then you don't actually have a file, you know, kind of thing. So, um, and uh, these are typical XLR cables. Uh, we offer, um, I think the brand is Shure microphones for them as well. Um, and, and this is this, what you see, what I intended to bring was a set of six, but we have four. Um, 
the students have access to a kit that has the four microphones. And typically we would see projects come through where there's four microphones here as well. What is the difference between podcasting and traditional recording? Uh, I don't know. Um, can you, what do you mean by traditional recording? Well, I've made a recording as, as a member of the band. I still have my reel-to-reel -reel with my, <laughs> my uh, demo tape on it. Uh, and uh, it was a similar setup. Uh, I'd be in one room with a guitar and a mic, and the drum would be in the kitchen, and so it would be in a dining room, yeah, yeah. And wires all over the house, and we had a guy that would mix it. And uh, I, this looks very similar to that, with, with the exception of the mixer. Sure. Um, so I would say that podcasting really is more about uh, kind of the delivery. So I think about it like radio on demand. Right, so it's only audio. It's typically people speaking, right? But it's like on demand, so you can get those episodes whenever you want uh, and listen to them. I find that people typically are listening to podcasts in the same instances where they'd be listening to radio. Similar so like, to a YouTube on the TV, it's on demand. You just go there and you find something. And yeah. So, um, so like in the car is when I listen to most of my podcasts. I have a similar commute. I have about an hour to an hour and a half to get here. Um, when I'm cleaning or just you know mm -hmm. you know putzing around the house, like I'll put on a podcast and be able to listen. So I really think podcasting is really more about the delivery of of the content. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Uh, it does. Yeah. I mean, like last night I was on Facebook. Uh, my wife's out of town, unfortunately, at a meeting, so I was just looking for something. And I have a cousin who was very much into the old bands in the '70s and the '60s. And and he had a number of posts on Facebook, and I, mean, I was just clicking through them and turning the volume way up. And was yeah. them, so. so I think the the recording uh, process is probably similar to what, mm -hmm. what what you're talking about with traditional recording. I think it's more about the delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was very helpful. <clears throat> Other questions about podcasting? Yeah, um, is it uh, typical for someone to edit their podcast after recording? I thought um, podcasts were uh, more like meant to be live. Yeah, I think I think it is my experience that most of the podcasts I encounter have some kind of back end editing that happens. So any intro music typically I think ad is added post production. Um, like if there are sound effects or transitions that happen, those are probably post production or after you know like after you've recorded. Um, and that's what we ask of our students too when they come to record a podcast. Uh, we show them how to use a program called Audacity, which is an audio editor, and we give them the tools to kind of edit their podcast, because we want them to be able to like put forth the project that they intend to, right? So um, if something happens in the recording session that um, they didn't really want to be part of their final project, we want to make sure that they can say, yeah, we didn't mean to say this, or somebody burst in in the middle of the podcast and we had to like cut that out, right? We still want them to have the tools to give a professional or an academic uh, project, you know, at the end, so they should be able to kind of clean up and tidy up their podcast. So yeah, I think editing is a big part of the podcast. How many students can you have at one time to do the podcast? <laughs> Eleven. Okay. Um, so really, I um, we have a, a setup that we could do six microphones, mm -hmm. and I typically would ask not really more than two. People to a microphone. So sharing a sharing a microphone can get difficult if uh, you know you set up correctly, just because people forget to like lean into the microphone or you know the setup that we have right now. We've kind of cranked the microphone, so we're going to get some background noise that I will try to edit you know mm -hmm. out and lower uh, in post production. But um, yeah, so about twelve with the equipment that we have now at a time at one time. So what would you recommend though if I had a, st a class of thirty? What would you recommend? I split the class? Yeah, groups. Different sessions? Yeah. Mm. So um, for a lot of classes, in an hour and 15 session, we'll chop that up into three 30-minute right. sessions. And we're, we're asking students, some students, to stick around for an extra 15 minutes to kind of fill that last 30-minute gap. Um, but students typically don't record for more than 10 to 15 minutes at a time. So 30 minutes is usually enough for them to kind of get through uh, what they need to for an assignment. So we'll kind of chop up the course period that you already have into you know kind of recording slots for them. So yeah, 
So we typically have groups of four, yeah. and we have three spaces in the library right now that we set up recording equipment. So we can get you know three groups at a time. We typically see about nine is about yeah. the max in an hour and fifteen session. Nine groups, which is roughly about four, you know, so four for yeah. before class. So you just come to the library. How how do you, how would you go about getting your classes signed up to do? Hi, my name is Dan Matthews. I'm the digital ah, services lady. Okay, Dan. Yes. Um, I'll see you so, after. Yes. So okay. please do. So yeah. um, if any if any of you all here, anybody listening, are interested in podcasting, okay. just show up in the library and say podcasting, and you'll get connected probably with me. But we have enough. Nice. We have other librarians too that can help you kind of get set up, um, get you an instruction session, get you a recording session. Uh, we've gone out to classrooms outside of the library to help kind of show the equipment. Um, so we're really flexible in that way. We're really kind of open to you know getting everybody out and podcasting. So. From a social media standpoint, since Mike's here too, how could we use podcasts? Can we share them on social media? Um, yeah, I mean they're an RSS feed, so I mean, that, that might be too technical for some people. But uh, <laughs> like basically, it's just like a feed that you could push out. I mean the library does it already. Oh, okay. um, I know I've seen like Troy or whoever on the mm -hmm. Twitter account they push out the podcast that either students or they do themselves so it generates a link just like anything else so like if we were to do something with like a student or something like yeah. that like that's something that just provides a link that usually it'll open up in a like your app podcast or a podcast player that you would use on your phone almost all phones come with some default yeah. app for it um, and we see uh, our students typically turn in their podcast using Google Drive so mm -hmm. using like free storage software mm -hmm. They can load their podcast up and then share a shareable link with their instructor. Mm -hmm. So that way, like in Canvas, just copy and paste the link, and then mm -hmm. the instructors have access and can listen through Canvas as well. Um, so there are other ways too, like you could upload a file into a discussion board, and then everybody can see or not see, but hear the podcast and comment that kind of stuff. So there's other ways to share it, like via Canvas in a class situation, um, but like sharing it through social media. Like you just need to have a way that you can store it online and then share a link with people, really. So. SoundCloud accounts, uh, Google Drive is good, but also creating an RSS feed for like the uh, Apple Music, um, Google Play, Google Podcasts, that kind of thing. So we could like post it to my scholarship page, like if I want to have a podcast, how to apply for a scholarship, and they could have it like on the web page there, or they could listen to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they, most of them have like an embeddable. Mm -hmm. You probably seen them online somewhere, like NPR, like just a little player. Yeah, yeah. Like, but mm -hmm. yeah, we do it. We have. We do it for our student stories on our story wall. Oh, that's right. We have right. a SoundCloud account that mm -hmm. you know, basically is a little incredible player. Even that's like helping yeah. somebody fill out an application or something like that, and you could have an audio directions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or even like a semester update, like here's some new scholarships that are, that exactly, are out yeah. that we want to make sure people know about, that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. That would be good. Wow, okay. Any other questions like about podcasting? Besides um, what you mentioned, um, like Google and SoundCloud, are there any other platforms for those who are outside of Moraine Valley that would be able to access and create their own? I've already talked about the ones that I'm super familiar with. Okay. Um, so that's something that I could look at. If anybody else has other platforms that they know of, like please shout it out. Well, Spotify has been really delving into the podcast market. Okay. Heavily. Push more of that. A couple years back, they tried to delve into video, and I think they're backing away from it. I only know this really well. I use Spotify a lot, but I also heard a, a radio story on it, and they were talking about how they were trying to get more into podcasts because iTunes is uh, obviously uh, podcasting is all available there. Awesome. Um, so, what are some of so those of you that listen? What are some of your podcasts that you would want to share with people to kind of get started or start thinking about getting into like consuming podcasts? I think for me, try to find something that you're already interested in, mm -hmm. because again, it's, for me, podcasts are almost like music. Like if you don't like the music that you're listening to, you're going to change the station regardless. You're going to change. You're going to change the uh, music. And so try to find something within the realm of something that you're interested in. So like for me, um, 
not only do they provide podcasts, but they also do a YouTube series as well. Um, they're called Wrestling with Regret. Um, and so I enjoy listening to him and then um, just listening to them because, again, like they go through like all like the WWE and like all that other stuff. And so, again, it's something that I like to listen to. And so I also like watching, you know, the feedback as well on what they have to say. And so I definitely suggest try finding a station or some type of genre that you like, you know, listen to like sports or whatever the, the case may be. I mean, I think from my perspective, like, a lot of stuff I listen to is super techie, but I'm, everybody here I'd be willing to bet has probably heard of this serial podcast that NPR did. Like, I know that's a really good one. It's They do different seasons, so, like, they do one, usually, like, ten episodes, and then break for about a year, and then they do a, then another one. So they've had a couple very popular ones, but NPR does a series of similar stuff that probably most people are yeah. If serial popular. was a book, it would be a page turner. Like I could not stop listening to. I just needed the next episode. Yeah. Wow. In like every season, I was like, "What were the What is? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so it's. Uh, you brought. It. Go ahead. Oh no, it was. Uh, I guess the popular one was probably like three, four years ago. Um, first. I'm trying to think of it because actually they're doing it. It's either HBO or Netflix is turning it into. Uh, it's going to be a series. So like the shows like Making a Murderer. And like the shows like that you see on Netflix, they took a cold, I guess it was a cold case about this kid in Baltimore that was in prison for murdering, I don't know if it was his girlfriend or, it might have been girlfriend, doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but her body was found in a park in Baltimore and this kid got accused of murdering her and all this stuff. And so he was in prison for I think like 10 years or something like that. And then this reporter, started going through the case and so like each week they take a different aspect of the case and they start looking at the facts and the details of the case and interviewing people from that time and stuff like that so I mean they don't ultimately make a decision at the end but they brought it up and then I think they actually Baltimore City Police reopened the case and started looking at it I know now it's getting turned into a TV series by someone I don't know who there was like actual action that happened from the podcast which was awesome so it was really neat and wait you said that they take a year off? I'm so fascinated by it. Yeah, they do. Um, it's, I guess, related to like a, like a television program. Like, yeah. they do, because, I mean, it's very in depth reporting. It's not something they do, and just someone sits down on a table and talks about something. Like, they spend a year or more investigating, um, investigating yeah. and researching the information. So, by the time you hear the podcast, they're done with it. Like, they've done it. And, and they, have moved on to yeah, the next Yeah, they've moved on next okay. like, They did uh, Bob Bergdahl, the oh, Marine yeah. that was accused of. Abandoning his post, like they did a series. I think that was their last series. That, that was did. season two. Was that season two? Season three is one of the C cities in Ohio. So Cincinnati, I think it's Cincinnati. Okay. Oh, but they yeah. they one investigate the like cities. the town, the courthouse. Yeah. Oh. And so like the things that happen in the courthouse and how the justice system works yeah. there, it is fascinating. And that was okay, so that was a little different because they yeah, took like yeah. different aspects, and so it wasn't one case they were following for the whole year. They looked at different cases throughout this more look at the justice system in in Cleveland. Yeah, yep. Cleveland. Cleveland. So do we just, what, go to NPR or go to, how do we get that? So uh, Apple Podcasts. Okay. Is that an iPhone? It is. You have the app on your phone. Okay. Uh, So you can just log in and kind of even search by topic, like stuff you're interested in, but you can also just search Serial for the one we're talking about now and download it and get it. I don't even know what that podcast looks like. It's the I, I have another one called the podcast app. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. So so just there, played so all the podcasts. Pod, that one. Oh, I, I see it. Oh, you see it. Podcast and just audio, correct? Yeah, just audio. And then you just, just search, just search topic. topics. Cereal, as in the food you eat. Uh, as yeah. in like cereal. S C R. Cereal killer. Yes, yes, yes. Or cereal series. Or cereal series. Okay, you fair. Oh, okay. Is this one cereal? Yes, the orange S. Yes. Yes, that's it. I'm going to start it in the car. Uh, let me know what you think. Yeah, what they have three years to, to catch up on. It so says season busy. Yeah, it says season three. I'm like, I got to go. Oh, it says start with season one. The season alibi for yeah. the Baltimore. Season yes. one yep. was the Baltimore yep. kids. Yep. Season yep. two was Bob Burgo and season three was I'm the, on it. I'm yeah. downloading really it good. right now. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We've converted somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other podcasts do y'all listen to? Well, one thing I was going to say is, um, you know, since it, when I started kind of getting into podcasts a few years ago is mostly listening to interviews of one-on-one, you know, a cross-desk sort of thing, uh, not much different than your kind of late night show, but um, like being a drummer and kind of a music geek, it was always kind of music podcasts or, or drummers talking to each other or something, but um, in the last few years. 
Pearson's like serial and whatnot, um, the investigative, extended investigative sort of reporting thing uh, is super interesting. Um, and I come from a news background. I spent like a decade in a newspaper and like really geek out at, because you know, um, the traditional sort of podcast was usually broader topic based and then like from episode to episode you're dealing with the different interviews so you might not listen throughout the entire series because it might not be a, a person on that podcast that you're so interested in but these narrow focused investigative um, pieces where they really dive into details is really interesting i just listened to um, the spiro agnew one that rachel meadow did holy cow Really? Yeah, that was crazy. Anybody catch that? No. Okay. So, uh, she, her team dives in deep to Spiro Agnew and Richard Nixon era finagling of all the crazy stuff in it. Cool. But it was pretty. It was pretty interesting. I don't know anything about that. So yeah. Besides the the Nixon aspect, I didn't know all the Agnew stuff. What are some other titles that you all would throw out if you listened? I like self-help and motivational type stuff, you know, wealth, help. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was learning how to speak Spanish from one, um, how to take care of your dog. I mean, anything that helps me learn yeah. self-help. Mostly health ones and that sort of thing. That's one of the things that I think is most interesting about podcasts is that they can be so niche in a way mm -hmm. that like you will find something that you specifically are interested in. It's not typically like just people getting and talking in general about stuff. You can really find stuff like your specific interest. There's probably something there. And if not, it's not that hard to make one. Mm -hmm. So right. you can right. make one. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've, I asked this just a little bit, um, but what are some creative ways that you could think of to use a podcast on campus? Uh, so like in a class that you teach maybe, or in the office that you work in, um, as a way to kind of share with the people you are around or with the campus what you do what what kinds of things do you think might be creative or interesting to do with a podcast um, I, mean, I was just thinking from yeah yeah sorry I was just thinking uh, in marketing we're always thinking of the various forms of medium we could use for marketing techniques for whoever needs it on campus but I don't know that we've tapped into podcasting as a marketing use no no I mean we use SoundCloud for some of our student stories, but I mean, I think whenever I was interviewed here, one of the ideas that I'd had that I pitched to my interview that I thought would be great if like, certain, like faculty members who were experts in certain areas could do, not necessarily a regular podcast, but a podcast in general, because it's just another way to promote like, hey, there's, so it's one of those things like, sometimes the people that are on TV aren't necessarily the smartest people in their field, they're just the ones that are out there promoting themselves the most, and the people who aren't out there promoting themselves the most are the real experts and should be heard. So, you know, we have really great professors and faculty members and staff members here that are experts in their areas. So it's like, you know, it'd be one of those things like if we could get them to do a podcast with the library or something like that, it's just an easier way to promote. And it's a lot easier, obviously, as we, you know, people listen to them when they exercise or when they run or drive in the car. Like, it's a very easy way for people to consume media because they yeah. don't have to sit there and necessarily open an app or read. It's kind of like more of a passive thing, like just on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's unique about a podcast is that's exactly what it is. Um, it's something that you don't have to uh, consume visually. You can just open it up just like music and just listen to it and just let it go. And some of them you can call in if you wanted to and actually have a conversation with the, with your host. But the podcasts seem more, uh, you know, personal rather than just a broad radio station or something like that. It's more like it's, Hello, it's niche. It's Sarah. Niche. Sarah. There it is. There it is. <laughs> I'm so happy that you downloaded it. Oh. <laughs> so okay. I think I think it would be cool because for example, like for history class, because I love history. So instead of having like a professor, for example, have each individual student write, you know, twenty papers for like, you know, that specific subject, have them talk about it instead. Like still have them do the research, have them read, like, read the book, you know, use actual facts and read, uh, resources. But at the end of the day, I think it'll be a lot better for, you know, have it, have it be a discussion versus them, you know, typing out a five page paper and then just turning it in for a grade. Whereas, you know, again, if you're contributing to a, you know, a conversation like this, because even with 
for example, like us, you know, sitting in this room right now, if we wanted to, we could have a whole sit down conversation about uh, the podcast serial. If we all, went ahead, all oh, yeah. if we all went ahead and listened to it, and then mm -hmm. we came back and we're like, oh, I love this part. Did you hear about this part? No, I didn't get to that part yet. Hold on, wait. And so, again, you know, the, I think the sky's the limit to what um, podcasts can be and what it should be. Um, again, it's a medium that. Um, that you know is, is, is gaining more traction as years go on, as I as I as I've seen. Um, but I think you know it, it, whatever um, ideas that you know again people have, you know, they should be you know put down into audio form as well. I agree with that. I have a friend who does beer geeks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with beer geeks. They do podcasts and they're all over the place, and yeah. all they do is talk about beer. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty fascinating because. I would have never known anything about beer. I really don't care, but it is fascinating about different, I would, you know, ingredients, and it's it, it truly is fascinating. But like you said, it's you can use it and really maximize, right. you know, the potential. There's so much to talk about because everyone has something to talk about. Right. Um, but as far as our here on on campus, our department, of multicultural student affairs, we are um, we do celebrating diversity. Celebrate celebrating diversity is an umbrella for um, LGBTQ. Uh, Women's History Month, Black History Month, um, Greek Italian, uh, Asian history, and st stuff like that. So we're always doing something. Uh, we have a lot of students coming in, so there's a lot of deadlines. So a lot of times, you know, no one picks up the phone anymore. So voicemails are nearly obsolete, right? We don't listen to voicemail anymore. We're texting or we're reading feeds. But sometimes we need to hear things, and the audio in that is if you if you voluntarily listen or know that there's you know some sort of nugget in there that you might be able to um, you know be benefit from, then that's kind of important. So people, you know, if you know this is something that you can rely on because it's giving you deadlines. So people are there. There are visual learners and there are audio learners, and so um, I think that's something that would, that would be interesting because we have a lot of um, events that we uh, host throughout the school year, and I don't think they're nearly as attended as they should be. Sure. Um, you know what I'm talking about, and there's so much, I mean, even for instance, Black History Month right now, um, I feel like there's so many activities that could have been really, uh, like just, there should have been more attendance. Uh, so th sometimes the calendar isn't enough, or because people don't know about the calendar. You know, how do you access these things? Well, let me tell you how. So, yeah, I think that's, that's a pretty good thing. The calendar and the timing, yeah. a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. We can play a part with people's classes Absolutely. and things like that. But I, I agree with you a thousand percent. Another, as he said, medium of communication, I mean, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Right. So all it could do would, would be to to help. I think that's yeah. Like, here's a text it message with the link. It extends your reach. That's the best mm -hmm. way to say I just took, I don't know, four classes to see Green Book last week. And... Um, we're talking about it on Thursday, and I'm uber excited because it won, right, um, Best Picture at the Oscars, so I can't wait to see what they say about that. But I was just thinking, they have to present on it, mm -hmm. and I was just, as even as she was talking, like, about the beer. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, I bet this would be quite a thing for them to present, considering it's Black History Month. This is the last day, and it could play such a huge part considering the content of the film. Yeah, I, I need to play with it in my head, but you all just gave me so many ideas for that. Good. Because you're, the goal is to cater, going back to, to right. them, because right. that's the only way it extends the reach. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, right. we lose them. Because right. I think the, the, the worst thing that can happen is that nobody listens. Right. You know? right. That's, that's, right. That's, right. that's the worst but, thing. Right, that's the worst thing. But again, as long as that is available and you're able to push it, that's yeah, you win. the best right. That's what you can mm -hmm. do. Because mm -hmm. again, at the end of the day, everybody has an opinion on something. Um, even for me, like even just thinking about this right now, because I'm in a show over here at Moraine called American mm -hmm. Rio. It's you were great in it. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. It was a, it's a brand new play that we got commissioned through the FPAC, and so um, it'll be cool if I can get some of my castmates to like come in and like talk about just like their research and then like how they you know went about you know going into their character and just you know things that we've learned because again with the show we go you know instead of just starting at slavery as most you know African American culture, you know, starts, we start all the way in Africa and then kind of sort of go through the whole, you know, slave trade and then, you know, slavery itself. Um, and so again, there's there's always something to talk about. I think, you know, having, you know, that audio, you know, p people who learn uh, with audio, you know, it, it helps them 
uh, paint their picture as well. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. I know when you go to the symphony, a lot of times they have a session before the symphony comes out, and they explain to you the whole what you're yes. going to experience, basically. Right. Yes. Similar to that, you know, they have an actor, actors talking about their experience mm -hmm. and preparing for a role. I right. think that'd be great. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. actually really exciting just mm -hmm. to even hear that. You know, and that could be you know like a, a series. Like right. you, mm -hmm. you do put on a show. Yeah, the American do you series. Put like a, yeah. put a put some things out about it. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's why I came. Curtis and Jaren yeah. told me about it. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, oh, okay, that sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. Shameless plug, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah. That is yeah. also very common yeah. in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to talk about what we're doing. Very common. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I do want to get to the question of learning college day. So, uh, I would like everybody to kind of share like their big takeaways. So, the big thing that they got from today that they are going to go out into the world and kind of do something with it, right? So, what was that for you today? And we'll just kind of go around. Well, I have to agree with Blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a great time with that. My, I have a sister and a brother-in-law who used to come cards in Vegas. Wow. And uh, they, they've never spent uh, their own money to get there and back. Uh, they've done it for years. And, and they, they used to have rules where uh, he wouldn't gamble at the same time that my sister was gambling and never at the same table if they happened to be in the casino at the same time. And, you know, they didn't do it for, I mean, they weren't professionals, but there is a way of doing it. And then just today, yeah. with the, the little the cheat basics. sheets they gave yep. us, uh, I, I left with a couple of steps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very oh proud of so <laughs> <laughs> uh, But no, the whole day was great. And last year was my first time doing this. I've been here just over a year. And last year's experience was also very good. Oh, cool. very good. Um, besides the blackjack, I actually went to one with the speech team. Excellent. And they were amazing. Makes me want to go on some more Broadway shows or something. Mm -hmm. But they're so young and talented, and I was blown away. Mm -hmm. Blown away. Um, I did blackjack as well. I'm going to stick to the digital version. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> um, <laughs> she was there. It wasn't me. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my day. Everyone has a day, you know. Um, but what I like about um, these types of events, and I've only been here close to a year as well, so I think it's really nice because we are stuck in our own little bubble, mm -hmm. and we don't see what's going on. There are so many moving parts mm -hmm. here on campus, and we take, you know, we just don't think about that. So I'm able to sit next to you. Didn't, I'm sorry, nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, don't know that every, there's so many talented people out there, and um, they're honing their crafts, and they're sharing it with everyone. And that's, it's really impressive to see that there's so much talent on campus and we don't get to see that on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, you know, in and out, in and out. And it's repetitive and it just becomes mundane and then you don't see every beautiful thing that's happening here. So that's what I really like about it. That's, I, I really, and those are those little perks yeah. of being at Moraine that I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of got a tag on that. Yeah. Uh, feeling like a student again is great. <laughs> <laughs> you don't always get time to take classes on your at least mm -hmm. I don't right now, but <laughs> I'm sure there'll be time for that. Um, today, I, I think the most interesting class I took was um, uh, on evolution that um, Imani was once. Oh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. right. um, she's always teaches a great class, but it was really interesting to you know have a certain belief sy systems challenged. You know, taught Darwin, and um, here was a figure in uh, Basra. Um, in 600, like uh, coming up with concepts of evolution and natural selection a full thousand or two thousand years ahead of Darwin or something. So that was super interesting. Um, I think for me, like I'm always impressed because just at our staff and faculty, because we know them as you know, whatever they teach, like the class I took, the year, the buy a car, get a trip thing. Like, he's an IT guy, like, he teaches information technology, but he has experience with, you know, cars, he's a car guy. So, like, for me, it's like, I've always taken a class with someone, like, that's not traditionally, like, in an area that they teach or that you associate them with, where you kind of realize, like, oh, you know, all this, 
know, have lives outside of Moraine, and that you know experience and expertise that we have outside is valuable. And so for me, it's always interesting to go out and see, like you know, Brett can teach a class on drumming, but most people probably just know him as a graphic designer. So it's just always one of those like you get to kind of like I guess peek behind the curtain of who we are, and you get to see the other side of everybody. I can not, I can kind of sort of go off of what Mike said. He actually joked with me when I walked in. He was like, "Oh, when you were a student, you used to have this day off." And so um, for me, I used to work for Student Life and also over at the Fit Rec. And so for me, I would normally have the day off. But for me, I think it was really cool just to see the other side of the spectrum as to what the faculty do here you know, on this day. And so um, with this being my very first um, college learning day, um, it was really fun. Um, I couldn't really pinpoint one class that was just so great because I think all of them kind of sort of just culminate and you know, for me just it helped me realize that not only is you know college for the students, but it's also for the people behind the scenes as well, as what in what they do, you know, outside of you know being here. Because like for example, like um, with Lynn Peters, she had a um, solo art show today, and so again she went sabbatical and like took time to do all this artwork, and now it's in the F building. And for me, I'm just like, man, that's you know insanely incredible. And I don't know how many students know that you know she took a full year off to you know create all this art you know and then you know maybe even more time than that um so for me i think again with the with, with moraine valley again the key word is community and so we get a chance to see who we really are as people outside of the workplace i, mean, I agree i piggyback on all of you it's amazing to meet everybody i would never cross paths with most of all of you and having the opportunity to see what everybody does and how we're all kind of intermeshed with each other in some uh, way, shape, or form, and wonderful talents with everybody that presented that they're uh, sharing what they what they have. It's, it's a great opportunity, great experience. Um, uh, my takeaway: this is my second time doing it. Uh, it. The genealogy class was really interesting, even though all of them are pretty um, good. Uh, this is a unique uh, experience. You don't see this in the corporate world. Um, anything like this where everything shuts down and we go to classes and all types of stuff is something that you know, I'm still kind of you know, adapting to and pay me for it. So, you know, I'm <laughs> absolutely okay with it. It's the like, real reason why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, you know, it, me being able, I see a bunch of names uh, and shipping over there, packages and stuff, and and get out the office and sit with people and it's like, oh, you are the person that I talked to <laughs> yesterday and I didn't know who you were, but I get to put names to uh, faces and voices and things like that. So I like being able to do that. That's true. I looked at today as like a bunch of podcasts, you know, all the yeah, classes yeah, we yeah. could take were like tuning into a, your favorite podcast. And I only wish that I could have gone to more because it was disappointing that there was so many that I missed. Um, I did the genealogy too, and now I want to go find my roots. And yeah. <laughs> um, I enjoyed, uh, Troy Swanson did a decision-making uh, seminar. It was really good to help me make decisions and just gathered a little bit of everything, you know, a little piece of something from everyone I attended. But I also loved the students, the, uh, the forensic team speaking. Wow, yeah. that one impressed me the most. They are so talented, and if y'all haven't seen them yet, I'd encourage you to get out and hear. <laughs> I, I've done this for a while, um, but the great thing about it is every year is different. Um, the common denominator is every year it's great, though. And to meet people, same as you guys were saying, that you don't know, or people who you know see your name but don't have a face, to put with it and vice versa. So it's just incredible to have days like this that you can just really kind of unwind, be yourself, and really meet the Moraine Valley family. It's probably the greatest um, advantage. All of my classes were a great speech team. I'm a huge fan, um, so they were great. This has been really fun, let me just say. I've really enjoyed the podcast. I am gonna incorporate it in anything that I do that betters that whole experience and reciprocity between students and, and faculty is awesome. Um, <clears throat> one history professor, Mary Fafleese, did um, a class today on Mozart and comparing the film, right, Amadeus, with his real life. And for whatever reason, I thought it was so fantastic. 
it was it was nostalgic. Yeah. It was yeah. it helped that she had free popcorn yeah. <laughs> and cheese and caramel too. So oh. it was just really, wow. really, really yeah, she yeah. did. It, it was really yeah. it's right. It I'm yeah. telling you, it was really good. So that's what I'm saying. The fact that a lot of times what we do in our you know, respective positions, it's just a small piece of who we are, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so a day to day like today gives us an opportunity to share that bigger part of who we are and for people to meet them and love them on a bigger scale. So again, it's been an absolute pleasure for coming to this session, meeting all of you all and y'all welcoming me being the late break. But thank you so much. Yes. Awesome. I, I couldn't have asked for a better better recording session. So thank you all for coming. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Again, this was the Learning College Day, potentially first annual uh, podcast recording. Uh, shameless plug, if you as a listener are interested in podcasting in the future, come to the library. Uh, my name is Dan Matthews. I'm the digital services librarian. You can come find me. We'll podcast. We'll nerd out. We'll, we'll get it happening. So again, thank you all for coming and, and sharing about your day with us. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side.